Yes, so our next product launch is Holoar, and our speaker is Natal Kaplan. Thank you for joining us from Israel. I know it's quite late there. It's about midnight. Thank you for Nathan. having me. Yes. So Nathan is CTO and R&D manager at Holoar. He has a decade of experience in micro-optics development before, from both the design and process sides. And now he will give you the latest in advancements in diffractive op optical elements for the high precision laser processing application. All right, so over, you, over to you, Nathan. Okay, thank you very much for this kind introduction, Pamela. And, and as Pamela said, I'm the CTO of Holor, and, which are, and we are a diffractive optics manufacturer specializing in the shaping of high power lasers for applications of our industrial and also other applications such as medical aesthetics. And in this short talk, I want to present two interesting products we've launched in the last year to answer different needs inside the sphere of laser material processing. These are the D-Light area texturing solution and the deep clean glass capping solution. But before I dive into these specific applications, I'll give you an overview of who are we at Holor, what we do in terms of diffractive optics, how diffractive optics work, and what do people generally do with diffractive optics when they utilize them for high intensity laser systems. So basically, there is a trend, at least the last five or 10 years, of reducing costs per watt for laser power. Now, um, most of you that are in the field know that uh, now fiber lasers and other high power now, even Yag lasers and harmonies are much more affordable. And this has opened up a whole slew of applications where laser systems can be used, and they're gradually replacing many traditional machining and other processes. For example, glass cutting instead of using diamond saws, patterning and texturing instead of using rollers, and of course, cutting, contacting, and many, many other applications. So we at Holor are a facilitator of this way because in all these applications, the shape of the spot and the intensity of the energy are critical. It is very important to have the right intensity inside the spot, not usually merely a Gaussian intensity, what comes out of the laser is not ideal. And often it's useful to have several spots or uh, to multiply the number of spots to increase the throughput. We at Holor specialize in producing diffractive optics for these sorts of needs. We were founded in 1989 in Israel, and we're still there. And we also produce everything in-house, uh, design, production, everything. And we're going strong since then, uh, together with the laser market, the material processing market. We have the in-house specialty in design. We're, we're our own design house. We use our own softwares that were developed for many years. And for diffractive optics, as you will see, the design is very important. Of course, precise production of our clean room facilities based on our own designs allows us to offer our customers accurate tolerances based on the connection between production and design that we have uniquely in this field. So what are diffractive optics? Diffractive optics or diffractive optical elements, which I would call DOEs from now on, are basically thin light windows that can be used for the shaping of light. And our diffractive optics are based on phase relief ratings. These are basically etched structures into the raw material of the window, which is for us either high-grade UV fuel silica or zinc selenide for longer wavelengths. And these structures are etched and can create some controlled phase profile on the wavefront of the laser. Now, what does this wavefront do? The, the answer is it creates a diffraction. For the right height of these sorts of etched patterns, the laser waves going through the structure are diffracted and are delayed by a certain control delay. Now, what does it do? This control delay, for example, can create effects such as a lens called Fresnel zone plate, create a blaze grating, which is the equivalent of the refractive normal prism. And of course, there are a lot of other manipulations that are not so naive to describe with refractive optics that can be done if you can control the phase at the front of the element. And this is all done at a layer that is easily the height of one wave, which means micron or less, typically. All that rest of the bulk is inactive. This makes the elements very, very robust to damages at high laser damage thresholds. And basically, they have the same LDPs as a window, a flat window of the same material. 
Also, there are no NAs like in the refractive optics, no curvature, no need to account for that in the AR coating. So they are very suitable for high power lasers. And, and what can you do with them? So basically, it's sky's the limit. The typical applications that people use them for are for beam splitting into an array of spots with very accurately controlled separations. Basically, we have no tolerance for that due to our semiconductor conductor type manufacturing processes. Uh, or it can be one dimensional array for parallel channel scribing. We can shape a spot into a flat top, either single mode or multi mode using beam shapers or diffusers as needed. We can create various mode changing face plates, such as vortex face plates or other face plates. And we can manipulate the focal characteristics of the spot instead of it focusing to one Rayleigh depth of focus or two Rayleigh, basically depth of focus, we can manipulate it and make it longer using vessel-like functions or other types of functions that we can superimpose on the wavefront. Uh, so what do people use our diffractive optics for? So they are using many industrial laser applications. We have customers covering the entire world from Japan, Central Europe, China, Korea, the US. I, I, Hardly can think of any large laser integrator that does not work with us. And the diffractive optical elements are used, for example, in welding and cutting to shape the beam to gray heat the weld or post heat the weld. And for cutting, flat tops help avoid curve losses, make the curve nicer and less spattering. For perforation, for example, food packages or filter papers, or cigarettes or medicinal purposes, multi spot elements can multiply the throughput. And of course, surface treatments, for example, the cleaning of uh, paint or uh, the removal of rust using laser line shaping. So these are all macro machining processes, but lately we're seeing a lot of things with micro machining processes. Micro machining is where viewers really shine. Uh, basically, we, we're seeing a lot of interest in PCD processing and solar panel scribing, a lot of contacting being done with flat top beam shapers, usually rectangular to, to get nice channels for solar panels where the conduction uh, can later be created using the position of the contact materials. Uh, surface texturing and of course laser lift of the debonding, usually with UV lasers to enable the production of microwaves. So these are a lot of applications and UVs are used even more, but I will try today to focus on two new applications we have developed recently in uh, the last year. So the first one I want to talk about is the, our deep clip solution for laser glass cutting with ultra short IR lasers. So uh, there is a method of glass cutting that is currently gaining a lot of interest called filamentation cutting, where one needs one cuts the, the glass, especially thick glass, by focusing it to a very tight waist over the entire thickness of the glass, which is usually one or two millimeters, and creating a sort of uh, an area where there is internal stress and that you can later crack either by thermal or other means. And then you have a very nice separation line. This is done, for example, for flat panel displays, cell phone covers, and other applications where you need the edge to be very high quality to avoid cracks that uh, make it weaker. So this calls for a system that can focus the spot down for IR to something like two, three microns, while having a depth of focus of more than a thousand microns. Now, optically, this is not possible to do with any sort of normal optic. I mean, if you use a lens, it's impossible. But using the correct tailored bezel like functions done by diffractive optics and a unique optical design, we've produced the deep tube module, which is a full design that replaces an objective, a high power laser objective, as a focusing optic that, given a single mode input of around six millimeter, it needs to be sometimes adjusted depending on the laser characteristics, it will give you at the work, at the work distance a depth of focus of anything that the module is tailored for. It can be from 0 0.25 millimeters up to 3 millimeters, each module with its own depth of focus. It has a reasonable working distance of more than 7 millimeters, which is such a high NA objective is typical. And it gives much better flat top Z behavior compared to normal axicons or that generate just a bezel beam. We have also a product called diffractive axicon, which is useful for, for, let's call it lower end systems where this tail is no consequence. But for most applications, we found out that this sort of tail creates a cut that is uneven. And it's critical to use a sort of a flat top in Z 
which is created by our diffuse module. Uh, each module is produced and tested individually in our labs and is provided with the testing report. And they are now on offer and a lot of interest for many customers, many of them in the East Asia where the sort of processing of glasses gaining a lot of currency. The second application I want to talk about is D-Light laser texturing. So the, the idea of laser texturing of surfaces is of course done commercially for things that are high-end, for example, dental implants, but for high areas such as panels, for example, for home appliances, currently it is not done commercially by laser as it is not cost effective. And one of the problems is that you have very powerful lasers, but you can't spread the energy over enough spots to process it at anything close to the required throughputs, which are usually more than one meter square per minute. So we came up at Holor with a solution based on our experience working with a European project called Prometheus, where there was also efforts to factor in large areas. But this is a different solution that is very simple optically, basically a single diffractive element that creates an array of spots that are very dense. They have sort of sinusoidal intensity modulation and covers the entire pixel. In this case, for example, it can be one over one millimeters, it's focused with a theta scan lens, with a pattern of more than 2,500 spots. And this can be patterned using a high power laser with a single shot. And to prove this concept, we've done uh, experiments, an experiment uh, together with the high laser center of the Czech Republic with their parallel laser system, which is an ultra short laser, 130 watts. And this is our element being scanned over the, the area of a four by four centimeter sample. I'll run it again because sometimes the video doesn't go through. And maybe I'll try to use it here. And if you see this square, it is the area that is being patterned simultaneously with 2,500 spots. These spots have 20 micron separations, but using different optical setups in the same DOE, you could get a different density, a different type of pixel. It could be an elongated line, and you can reach very high throughput with that. This was just an experiment, but given enough laser power, you can reach commercial scale throughput with a simple system of a single diffractive D light element and a scan lens or even a simpler lens of objective, for example. Uh, so this is our D light solution. And if you're interested in the solutions that Holor can offer, diffractive optics in general, or other types of high power laser shaping for industrial or other needs, please contact us or ask your questions now. Oh, Nathan, that was great. Um, so we do have one question here. Okay. What are the DOE advantages when compared with alternative active sh shaping methods such as SLM? Okay, so SLM are very nice and flexible and are great for the proof of concept of systems. But for industrial systems, you usually don't need the flexibility of changing, changing the phase. What you need is high resolution of the phase and you is a much higher resolution of the phase and high LDT. Even the best SLM water cooled from Hamamatsu or other producers never re reach the LDT for uh, that is even remotely close to DOEs. DOEs can handle more than 20 kilowatts. So uh, for high power systems or for industrial systems where you don't really need to change the shape all the time, the system, the usually the machine is doing the same thing. DOEs are much more cost effective. They're easy to integrate. You don't need to talk with them electrically with the system and they're straightforward. Okay, good answer, thank you. Uh, second question, can your DOEs handle ultra short pulses? What is the effect on the pulse width? Okay, so basically DOEs are the best optic to shape ultra short pulses because ultra short pulses suffer from what's called temporal dispersion. The pulses become longer. And if you use thin optics, especially few silica thin optics, then the temporal dispersion is minimal. So DOEs are the best way to handle ultra short pulses. And generally it's recommended to work with as thin a material as possible We can do one millimeter easily, for example. You're muted, Pamela, I'm sorry. Pamela, you're muted? Unmute, there we go. Am I unmuted? Yeah, you're yeah, unmuted now, thanks. Okay. Okay, so we have a question in our chat. Let's see here. 
Question from Mi Zhang. Min Zheng, what is the M2 requirement for your cleave module? So it needs a single mode, and M square smaller than 1.3 or 1.5. It cannot work with a multi mode because we need it's a sort of a beam shaper. It needs an analytical beam shape. We can design and assume it's that shape. But most lasers used there are 1.3 to 1.5, usually 40 watts, 20 watts, and tens of kilohertz. That's the typical lasers. Okay, Mind, I hope that answered your question. Just let us know. I have two more questions here. Are your DOE suitable for multi kilowatt laser systems and what are the thermal effects? Okay, so basically our DOEs are suitable for multi kilowatt systems. They have been used in many multi kilowatt systems. It is of course advisable to increase the beam size in such systems. Same as you would do with a normal fused silica window. Now our elements are not absorbing the, the loss of energy that is not in efficiency is scattered to higher angles. So one needs to take care in such systems to cool the body with water cooling, but usually it is done anyway in multi kilowatt systems. Okay, thank you. One last question. What makes you stand out from the competitors? I like that one. Okay, so I think Holloway's uniqueness is, first of all, our strong design, in-house design suit and our connection, phenomenal connection between the design and the production side. Our ability to design and do design for production with tolerances allows us to commit to, to specs that we know the customer will get. And of course, we test everything, but this enables us to offer very low cost NRE and testing projects where other competitors will bulk with such projects. Perfect answer. That's fantastic. Well, I think you'll have lots of questions after this segment. So I appreciate you joining us at such an early hour and look forward to working with you again. Thank you. Thank you.